Welcome everybody to today's, that's week four, session one of the EVO session, Immersive Language Learning in Virtual Worlds. Ah, Christiana Pivetta, thank, thank you so much for enlightening who you are. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and um, we're looking forward to meeting Ian Cook-Bonny, if I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> yes, from you've New done Zealand. that really well. <laughs> <laughs> from New Zealand and uh, We've met um, through, well, we've been introduced through CoSpaces in Munich. CoSpaces is a lovely 3D tool that I want to introduce you to. And they referred us to somebody who is available at 9 p.m. in Europe, which was the issue, because CoSpaces in Munich obviously is open during the day, but not at night. So here it is. Ian's local time is 9 a.m. He's connecting from his school. And the school, if I may introduce you to this one, is a very fascinating school. You'll probably tell us more about this one, but I'm just wanting to show it. That's mm. Tahuna, the normal intermediate school. Now, it, the name of it is a, was a little bit different, <laughs> normal, normal intermediate, but you'll tell us yes. more about it. The fascinating I, thing I sort of looked at is the uh, um, this, which is not familiar to us at all, Te Tayo Peka. Well yeah. pronounced, yes. Uh, so this is one of the schools I work in. It's the lead school for um, our STEAM cluster and also our language, Mandarin language cluster. So an intermediate school, if you are not familiar with that, is for year seven and eight students. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a transition school between primary school and secondary school. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, so um, yes. it's and the normal part means that it's actually attached to uh, a college of education. So normal schools across the globe, if it's got normal in it, it means it has a special relationship with a college of education, uh, meaning that it has, uh, it hosts student teachers a lot. So student teachers will come in as part of their, their curriculum practice uh, as they learn to be teachers. So that's what the normal is for in the name. Uh, yes, there's some of our staff and our love principal there too, uh, going there. Yeah. So it's quite, for, for, <laughs> for our city, uh, Tahuna is probably one of the largest schools. We've just gone over 600 students this year. Wow. Um, so we at Eden has about 300,000 people in it uh, that live there. So we are a large school for Dunedin, uh, not a large school globally, perhaps. Uh, and we uh, sit in lovely Dunedin, which is uh, uh, down in the south end of New Zealand. And we're situated sort of at the top of the Otago Peninsula and, and schools going to fair. Now, the Te Taiopeka, so this is Te Reo Māori. So Māori is the, the native language of New Zealand. Uh, and Te Taiopeka is like our cultural group in there too. So when you go into that section on the website, you'll see lots of things around uh, our cultural stuff, particularly uh, our our Maori and, and Maori culture, things in there as well. So that's what that word is about. So that's, that's it. And I can't actually remember what it means to tell you what it means, sorry, but um, oh, okay. uh, there's some homework for you to find out. I could probably Google it right now and find out. Uh, oh. But it is the, the name of our um, Uh, the group by the sea, yes, ah, is, group by which the is sea. us, because that is that is you know where we are. We're um, very fortunate. We our school is situated in a suburb called St Kilda, and basically, if you walk out the front gate over the the rugby field, you're at the beach. So we're situated <laughs> right by the beach. Um, Sounds like a dream. Hence, <laughs> yeah, hence the, hence the little bird in the symbol for Tahuna, uh, which is actually a royal albatross. Uh, which is a very special bird, uh, only uh, nests here, only uh, breeds here in Dunedin on our peninsula uh, and is the biggest uh, bird, a uh, seabird, I think it has got the longest wingspan in the world. But these so are the funny ones when they, start, when they start taking off, you know. <laughs> mm. Well, they've got like double double jointed wings, so they sort of come out and then they fold out again. So they got massive, massive wings, and they spend about six months when they're adults actually flying 
at sea. And then they come back and roost and mate and that and buy a lighthouse on and, the peninsula. And hmm. your role um, as a teacher is in uh, STEAM. So my yeah, my role is is, is a, a leader for STEAM. So not just here at Tahuna. So we have our Otago Peninsula School. So there's nine schools on the Otago Peninsula, and we have a three-year STEAM project with. Um, all of those schools. So I lead that project uh, and we're just starting our second year of those three years looking at STEAM. So that's you know, science, technology, engineering, arts and maths. But we also have a digital collaboration uh, focus as well because these 18 kilometres between Tahuna Normal Intermediate and our little primary school Portobello, which is down by the Albatross at the other end of the peninsula, and it's, it's a very nice road, it's very scenic, but it's a tourist road and it's full of roadworks at the moment. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to, to get down to the schools and things like that too, and for them to get there. Uh, so a focus for us was actually breaking classroom walls and connecting to other people. And we've looked at that between our cluster, but also um, like globally. So we're wanting to, to break our classroom walls and connect to, to classes and to learners and students across the world. So, so you have a very global language learning program, Jordan. We do. We have, um, like at Tuna alone, we have um, Samoan, we have Japanese, we have Mandarin. So we're a Mandarin language learning cluster as well. We have a German teacher, actually, who is originally from German and Germany, and uh, he teaches German. Uh, so... Now, in our school alone, we have you know, quite a few language options that are available for students. And they can do those as a formal class or um, as an elective. So um, during term two and three on a Friday, students can choose an elective, you know, an interest subject that they want to do. And you know, some of those are languages as well. So, um, and you do a lot of collaboration here. as well with, uh, with other countries. Not only learn language yeah. locally, but also connect to... Yes, okay. yeah. that's right. So, um, yeah, because we're a small country and we're, we're small schools, um, we're very interested in connecting to, to people across the world and, look, and becoming global <laughs> citizens, I would say. And part of that is language learning, and, but also cultural learning. So, so we look for opportunities to connect to classes you know, across the globe. Uh, as I said before, we are, you know, a Mandarin language learning cluster. So several of our schools have sister schools in China. And in the past, these have kind of been a, a very sort of static thing. So nothing, you sort of, you sign it and you say you're a sister school, but nothing much happens. But we've tried to make these a living, breathing, sort of, you know, real thing. So we have students coming to visit and we send students over to our sister schools. But... We also try to connect digitally using tools like Zoom so that students can talk and, and practice their language, their conversational uh, language skills um, through Zoom and, and tools like CoSpaces. So you can do that too. And especially that combination, Zoom, CoSpaces and what you do. We're looking forward to you. And so I'll shut up now and let you get on okay. with it. <laughs> Sure, <laughs> Thank you no so problem. much. <laughs> um, I'll, bring, I'll bring everyone's questions to your attention for sure. But sure. Just yes, I've got the chat up beside me. So, to look um, forward yeah. to you showing us what you have. Sure. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so this really came out of a conversation that started around about five or six years ago with a, with a teacher colleague of mine. And he's actually ended up as the Director of International Sort of Relations at Tahuna. Uh, and we looked at ways that we could combine digital technology with language learning. And the first thing we, the step we did was connecting students through Zoom. So we typically use Zoom. We started with Skype, uh, but found that it didn't really work as well as it, it could do. Uh, and then we moved on to, to Zoom after some recommendations from some local experts. And it's been really good for our students because it's easy to set up, it's easy to use, and the tools are really uh, great, which I'll show you a couple of little tips and tricks in a minute. Uh, 
And then from there, once we had students talking to each other through Zoom, and they were so interesting to watch them talking and conversing together, because we have uh, Mandarin um, language lessons here, and we have formal language learning and cultural lessons. And, and of course, in China, they have um, formal English lessons. And I know we, so there's a lot of formal language learning, but not a lot of opportunities to practice that in a conversational setting. So, you know, this gave our students and even our teachers a chance to, to talk face to face with, with students from another country, from another language and practice their language skills. So once we've done that, we're sort of thinking, well, how do we make this a little bit more immersive? How do we make it more real and authentic for our students? Because what we ideally wanted to do was to have a shared learning experience where we had a, a, a friend or a buddy that was in another class and we could work on a project together. And, and it would be a seamless, natural, authentic sort of task that they were doing. So I looked for tools that would allow us to do that. And one of these that we stumbled across was Co-Spaces. Well, there's actually one that I've been working with for, for a wee bit. And then I said, well, why don't we try this? Uh, and it's been super popular. And uh, I'll show you a couple of things that we've worked on. So I'll do a screen share. So if I just share, uh, let me have a look, I think this, Hang on, I'll just make sure I've got the right thing. Yep, I'll share that. I'll just share my desktop actually. Oh no, we'll try that. Share. All right, now if I close that tab, there we go. All right, I'm sort of showing you behind the curtain here. So for those that don't know, CoSpaces is a VR and AR creation platform particularly designed for schools. Okay, so it's designed for kids to use and it's really easy to use. So this is the, the, the home page, the cospaces.io uh, and you can just log and register here too. So when you join, there is a price like a pro version that you pay for, but there is a basic account that is free to use with limited resources and I'll take you through some of that a little bit later. But if I just go back to here, when I log in home, this is the home page for it. So we can build these virtual spaces that are called. So you can see here and here some of the you know, things that you know, I've been building in here, like that. But I want to show you just a couple of these here too. And so if we go over here. So the first one I'm going to show you is this one. This is the spot the difference activity. So if I load this up, in fact, I've got it. Oh, no, I have to do it again, sorry. Here we go, loading. So we thought about games that we could play. So what sort of games would be um, universal, shall we say? And we started with games like tic-tac-toe, you know, noughts and crosses, and we went to snakes and ladders and spot the difference. So games that pretty much everyone would play. And then we thought, how could we bring that into to building sort of experiences around some of those things? So this here is a co-space. So you can see it's a 3D model, 3D world. So I can rotate this around here like this. And we can sort of zoom in and out. And we are currently in what's called build mode at the moment. And actually build mode is collaborative. So if we both had CoSpaces accounts, so say I was talking to a student or someone in, in another country or another class, uh, they could actually sign and we could build in the same space together. So we could be connected here in Zoom. And we could be saying, oh, I think we need, uh, you know, uh, some giraffes over in the corner or something like that. And they could go and work on that too. So you can see here's a library down here. And how many these can, are the built How many can play together or uh, create together? Uh, if you're on the pro account, um, it's really up to your bandwidth, I think. So you can create group assignments. So you could have, say, an assignment, let's build a city or a zoo or whatever your um, context is, and you could assign it to um, your whole class and they would be all building in the same space. 
Really? Like it would get a little bit crowded, yes, uh, perhaps, wow. as people sort of chucking around. Then tend to find that it works really well in pairs or small groups. So I think at the most, we had one last year. I'm going to show you the Language Town uh, world next. And we had groups of six working on that. So we had three uh, students from New Zealand and three students from China in each group. And they would go into to that world and the teacher can create like a template and then push that out as an assignment. So it will go to all the students and then they can say whether that template is, you know, one each for them to build or whether they work on it collaboratively as a group. A little bit like um, if any of you have used things like Google Classroom or something like that, um, where you send out an assignment, you can choose whether it's, you know, everybody gets a copy or it's a group copy. So mm -hmm. similar sort of tool here in Co-Space. So really useful. And I'll so Susanna you. asks, uh, if you're collaborating while building something, how do you communicate? Can you use chat or do you have to use another software yeah. as well as code? Yeah, so that's, so that's where that Zoom Co-Space is sort of um, family meld partnership comes together. So exactly what we're doing now. So we could be here on Zoom and we're talking and it wouldn't have to be a video one, but it could just be an audio conversation but we can be here talking, communicating, and then building and working together here in Co-Spaces. Uh, so you can see, you know, lots of different models here in different sections down here for all these different models. Is there a text chat in this environment whereby you could text eventually, uh, perhaps to everyone who's building? Yeah, no, not at the moment. No. Um, okay. No, Just so it's... Go ahead. No, that's Thank good, you. good questions, yeah. <laughs> So uh, it's something that we can put in as a feature request though. So that could be a good thing to have, particularly as um, you now we're looking to improve this product too. And um, they are really good at uh, taking feedback and build, putting things in. Because um, one of the things I'd really like to see is not only ability to build together, but to play together in here too. So at the moment when, you, when I push play, only I'd be playing it, you know, whoever's on the other end wouldn't be playing as well but we found ways around that as well okay I'm going to give you a quick look just to see I'll put in something in here just for just to show you I'm just going to move that over to the side again go to the side there we go uh, let's put in uh, some plants so it's just a drag and drop thing so it's really easy for students to use and these just little quick tools. So if I wanted to, you know, make that bigger, smaller, rotate around, uh, you can, you know, do lots of things. So we can change the color of the thing. So very easy to create for students. Students can also upload their own content into here, which is really useful. So things like images, so you can see some here. Uh, it's even got a built-in web search that uh, brings in like royalty-free images they can use as part of it. Uh, but they can also import videos. So you can have little language that videos and things that they put on here too. They can build their own 3D models or import their own 3D models. And they can record sound into it as well. So you can have sound playing. So it can become a really rich environment. So I'm going to push play just to show you what that looks like when we're actually in the world. So here we go. Here's play. So you can see here now we're in the world. Well, I've just here, yeah, we'll stay in English just for a moment. Uh, and we can look around. I'm doing this from a laptop at the moment, so I'm just using the mouse and the keyboard. Part of it, as well as building, it has a coding side to it as well, so we can make things interactive. So you might have seen here, when I hover over the button here, it says, oh, okay, what language do you want this in? So we could actually say, oh, okay, we want this in Tereo Maori now. So now the zoo's in Maori, okay. Or I could say, actually, no, I want to see what Welcome to the Zoo looks like in Mandarin. So I'll click on here, and now we're in Mandarin. Okay. So I can actually change those languages and make buttons and things that would happen. So now I can actually walk into the zoo. And you can see we've got some things happening in our zoo here too. So all these things can be added and then created and programmed to work. So these like speech bubbles and things, and we can say what the bears are doing. You can see if we walk down here, 
and they actually that, move. Oh, yeah, that, and they can walk <laughs> around and they can do all sorts of things. Like I'm here too. And it's very easy for students to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can walk around and you can see things like the names of things. And so just from a, um, a language point of view right now, you know, we can be doing and saying, oh, actually, we're going to do our zoo with a focus on maybe describing words or, or colors or something like that. So when mm -hmm. our speech bubbles come in, they've got a, a, like a structure that we might be looking at for, for learning some language. Um, so you know, if a teacher was building this or, or students were building something, they could have a focus. But these for speech that bubbles are now the programmed, the coded speech bubbles that take place. Yeah, but we can go in and change them. Live? Yeah, we can change. No, the, they well, uh, they're, they're live, but we can just go back and we could change the coding very easily. And then they would push play and they would say something else completely mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Uh, the other thing in this is that as you walk around this zoo, because you uh, said the uh, the play functionality is just a single player, right? So these yeah. that run around are bots. They're not real people, correct? No, they're not real people. They are bots. Yeah, so okay. they're just models. Oh, they're very that are fascinating. Them. Very fascinating. Mm. Uh, and you know, for you, I'm screen sharing this. So if I was working with a student in another classroom, I would be doing this, or they might be doing it, and I might be talking them through. And I and might be saying, "Can you go and yeah, as an avatar?" Or no, no, you're no. just like a. It's just a window that you're looking. So you can't actually. They can't see me. So um, okay. so I might be. So if they were there, I might have shared this to them and said, "Okay, you push play, and then I'm going to give you some tasks to do." So I might say, go and find the elephant enclosure or something like that, and they would have to you know, do things. Or I might go and say, there might be some different things. And this one, it might be, because this is a, a game, this one, this is spot the difference. So we'd walk around the zoo in English, mm -hmm. and then we'd say, okay, so if I was talking to a Chinese student, I might say, right, now let's go and change that to Mandarin. And I want you to find six things that have changed in the zoo. And oh, there really? are six differences. <laughs> yeah. And I might go and find it. Oh, and I might, and they're walking around. They say, oh, the line's sleeping now instead of doing this. Or that umbrella is blue now and it was red before. Wow. So that you can, that you, can you know, by building the, the, the game around it, you can do that sort of thing as well as practicing your language skills. So you're trying to give them, you know, a task or something that we're doing uh, is rather than just, Know, getting into world and chatting to each other about random something they you know on the first level can build something together but then you might the second level they might have built something for someone else so it might be an experience that they do and then the other participant has to you know complete the challenge or do something and it gives them a framework around that language that they share together and something to talk about and converse about there too so so that's um the, the spot the difference language one okay from there and i'm just going to hop out of that now oh any questions about that um while we're there are there any other questions so, so basically the back? environment the uh, so you've you've taken the 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 3d space which you built and then you copied mm. it several times that was the yes. three of four or two of three um at the so bottom. you can see here mm -hmm. yeah at the side here, they had Co-Spaces works on an, an idea of scenes. So you might have seen at the bottom, it had one of four. So down here, you can see this is the yeah. English scene. And then we've got the scene copied for each one of those different languages. So you can duplicate, you once you've built one scene, you can duplicate and, and you then you can the language. Okay. change the language. Yeah, exactly. And then you can, actually, while we're behind the scenes, so you can see here, up beside our play button, there's the code button. So as well as being really useful for um, language learning, you know, we use CoSpace a lot as part of the STEAM side of things because it incorporates so many parts of that STEAM. We've got science, we've got um, the technology, we've got the building, um, but we've got the digital technologies here too. So you can see that coding is happening here too. So if I go over to say the beers, um, and this and is I the feature see. that they've added only in the last couple of years, right? Because when I, at the yeah, beginning it wasn't, so they added it. And I think this is just such a smart move. So fantastic. Yeah. 
it's it's really good for for adding the interactivity and getting things and to happen learning in there to too. code absolutely. yeah absolutely awesome yeah so we've got all that sort of stuff here if i go here there we go uh, so you can see here we've got so you can put in things like quizzes so mm -hmm. choice buttons so we can actually embed a quiz so you can see here um, you could actually have have that scene and then set uh, a quiz around it so you've got a quiz panel here too this so you can scratch. build like interactive yeah, yeah. So it is very similar to, to like if you've worked with scratch or any of those visual uh, coding blocks um, mm -hmm. very similar and do that too uh, Awesome. Absolutely to try awesome. I've been wanting to see this. I mean, this is just so stunning. Uh, where are we? So the little, the little people that walk around and speak. A yeah, I was just language. trying to find you. Yeah, where, where that is. Um, where has my coding gone for? Ah, oh, I might not have coded them to do that. So that. Uh, if I go here, because all I've done is uh, click on the speech, so you can see here, so that just tags a little speech bubble to them. So I can do that, and that just means it's on all the time. But I actually could code it to, to talk and, and then have a more, kind of, but in this case, I just put speech bubbles floating above their heads. So you can either have a think or a say. Mm -hmm. Because this had a language focus, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be visible all the time, so that when a, a learner was in the space, that was they were presented with those those sentence structures or the language all the time. They didn't have to worry about clicking on something or doing that. So hence, in this case, the speech bubbles are just above everybody's head all the time. What I'll do now is I'll pop out of this one. So I'll go back home, and I am. If I change that, can you see that one now? So I if I go that. over to here, yeah, uh, well, so you can see the, the browser with the different projects. Yeah, so yeah, it, uh, okay. So we might. I think it's not showing the other tab. So I'll just. You might have to screen share your desktop yeah. in order to show. Yeah, the I'm going to yeah just reshare that. Okay, so let's go to uh, desktop, and we'll just share. Right there we go. And I'll minimize you guys so we don't have to see yourselves. Right, so this one is called Language Town. So we built this one. This is the one that we built for um, our Chinese sister school for Tahuna. Uh, so we built the town as a space here. So doing that, and then we sort of gave that template to the kids and said, you know, go to here, add different things. So they might have added, so if you can see, for example, the different colored cars. And they tried to add variation because what one of the things we started with two language features we wanted to, at that time we're looking at colors and also positional language so things like the compass points or turning left turning right and things like that so this was designed for them to talk about those different language features mm. so not just pick, like, um, mm. add a little bit to the coding discussion because um, sure one person says how how easy is it to learn coding yeah and mm -hmm. um susanna also asked well what about students in their 20s who don't have <laughs> to learn yeah. coding so uh, can mm. you m do anything talk a bit about that about yeah absolutely to do coding yes so if you if you don't need want to do coding you, you definitely don't have to do coding to, to use this tool it just adds that extra interactivity and, and it just makes it a richer world but for example if i go into uh, this guy here this little guy we'll zoom in and just have a look at him so here is this little guy at the moment he doesn't do anything so if i wanted him to say something i could just double click on him go to speech and say hi so now you can see he's got the little speech bubble above him that says hi. So you can do that without coding anything. And the other thing that I could do without coding anything, I can double click on him and I can actually say, I want him to be, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's got more reactions. Uh, hang on, we'll just, uh, where are we, animation. Let's make him, 
Ah. All right. Here's the waving one. Should be able to make them wave at you. Let's just make them talking excited. There we go. So you go. So you can ah, see. Okay. So if I push play now and we walk up to them. So here we go. So here's our camera. We are here. So you can see on the on the ground here, um, we've got a compass rose just to help students or learners in the space, you know, know which direction is which. And you can see over here, we've got our first instruction. So it says, you know, they'd have to read that. And it says walk north to the blue bus shelter. So using those two color things. You notice around the compass rows that we have some buttons. So if I click one of these, it'll actually say that compass direction like east, it'll say that in Mandarin. So you've got a little mm -hmm. bit of language there too for both. You know, mm -hmm. too. So I can now walk around the space and have a look so I can say, oh, I've got to walk north to the blue bus shelter. So, and a student would have put that in. And you can see there's our wee boy that we got to say hi, and he's now you know, looking very excited. So we did that without any coding at all. So we oh, can have that. Cool. Yeah, so, and then we're along here and we're going, oh, we're at the blue bus shelter, what do I do now? So we'll have a wee look and we turn and look and then the lady says, oh, we've got to walk east into the park to find a little girl. Ah. So again, you know, we're practicing those language features. We've got to read that. We could have that support you know, via Zoom where you know, they're talking and say, oh, actually, I don't understand that sentence or could you read that for me or something like that or help me with this. So we've got that collaborative learning happening. So you can see here we can walk east into the park and we found the little girl and we go and hover over here and she's saying walk north. Okay, so we have to remember mm -hmm. to find the old man. So we might have been looking at you know, our compass directions or descriptive language. So here's our old man. And now we can walk west until we get to the shop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's really as far as we've got with this person designing that because I don't think they have built their shop yet. So, mm -hmm. But that's kind of the, the thing that we're looking at in here too. And we're using a laptop to do this. So you could be, we could be using a laptop, a, a desktop or a Chromebook works fine like this. But the other thing that's really good about CoSpace is that it's really um, platform agnostic. We can use a wide variety of different devices with CoSpaces. Um, so it works not only on web, so for, for our laptops, um, desktops and Chromebooks, but we have uh, an Android app so for our Android phones, and we've also got iOS apps. So there works on iPad and iPhones and things like that too. And I'm going to show you what Language Town looks like uh, from my phone now. So you can see what that looks like and how it's a little bit different to um, playing it from just the uh, laptop. All right, let's have a look here. Fire cable, let's share and see what happens, shall we? Uh, all right, we'll just have to try that again. Click it in. Uh, oh. Sharing quest is paused. Bring your shared window to the front. Oh, sorry, we have to ask. What's happening here? I Bear with me, team. And Ian <laughs> showed me a way of sharing uh, an iPad. Can you see this? Yeah, can you see my Zoom settings on the front here? Oh, no, because I'm not sharing anymore. <laughs> no. uh, but yes, um, if you're using Zoom with an iPad or an iPhone, you can... Simply plug in with yeah, the cable. Yeah, <laughs> plug in with the cable and it, and it will work. It's just not behaving itself at the moment, to be honest. Currently, it's a little bit grey. Oh, yeah, are we getting it? Stop share. Come on. Yeah, that's not. Oh, here we go. Yay. Hello. That's the mobile phone. So you can see my phone. Yeah, yeah. so here's my phone. So let's pop over. Can you see now? Here we go. We so there is Language Town, where we were before. Um, so I can, you know, use my finger to look around. And I can use the sort of back and forth. 
you know, to move around, but it's, that's not particularly why we use our phone. So you'll notice in the bottom right corner, we have three little buttons. So yeah. the first one has uh, the two, two circles. So this is called Magic Window, and it's particular to um, your iOS devices, so your iPhones and iPads, and we use this a lot. So now when I move the iPhone around or the iPad, I'm now like got a magic window into my world. <laughs> so I can actually just look around and move around in my world, and it, and it feels really natural. So it's, it's sort of the next best thing if you don't have – now a VR headset or something like that to being in virtual reality because I can feel that I've got that. So it just works all exactly the same. Uh, and we can go over here and do all the bits and we can click on things and, and do everything and it works really well. If I am lucky and I've got Google Cardboard or a headset or something like that, then the one, the little goggles you might recognize, that's the Google Cardboard uh, symbol. So if I'm in here and now I'm in headset mode, so I can be fully mm -hmm. immersed in the world and then walk around. And the last one, that middle one, that one is augmented reality. So that means I can just scan the floor, hopefully. There we go. And there we go. And now Language Town is now on the office floor here. <laughs> and I can actually walk around. <laughs> This is brilliant. That too. <laughs> so, which is really neat. Uh, so we could walk around that in the classroom and, and you know, you're, you're there in augmented reality as well. So, you know, lots and lots of ways of um, <laughs> connecting in there too. Um, it, the other thing it does have, actually, I wonder if I've got that on here. Um, see, I'll show you. Oh, no, I can't because I have, don't have a merge cube. The other thing that Coastbase does is it works with merge cubes. Now, I'm not sure if you're, is anyone, are you familiar with merge yeah, cubes? Yeah, I've I'm seen them, and I think a number yeah. of us have known. Who, who knows merge cubes? Yeah, anybody? I'll just stop that share just for a moment. Uh, so it works with merge cubes. So there's a merge yes, cube add-on that you can look, get. Look, look, Chris. Yeah. Ah, look at that. Ah, Chris has got one. <laughs> nice. Um, so... As, here's a language one. So this one, Let me actually, just add, will... add to it. Um, this Merge Cube is uh, cost about 20 to 30 US dollars. If you buy it on, on just, it's like a little bit like cardboard. It costs, it costs peanuts, uh, but there's so yes. much, yeah, and to be done. And you can, if you like, if you're really out of total money whatsoever, you can download the Merge Cube patterns from the internet yes. and build it yourself. So, you but the, the cool thing is with Merge Cube, you can basically add anything which is AR uh, possible. And um, yeah, Chris. Mm. <laughs> I'll show you an example of that. that. That is a language one. So this is... Um, By the way, Chris is at the moment uh, programming a chatbot for... <laughs> he's oh, he's our nice. techie here. He's in the US. Uh, you have to get so connected. So this is... <laughs> uh, we have... Um, talking about Te Reo Māori, so Māori are a native language here in New Zealand. So one of the, the traditions in there is uh, a mihi or a pipiha. So it is uh, traditionally when you meet someone for the first time, you introduce yourself. So a mihi or a pipiha is a, is a formal traditional way of introducing yourself in Te Reo Māori. And it goes through a certain framework. So it's quite nice as a language um, exercise for, for students to do it here. So I've actually got two versions here. So this one is a normal co-space, PPH co-space. So in Maori culture, when you introduce yourself, you introduce where you are from and also who your relations are as part of them. So you just don't rock up and say, hi, I'm Ian, and that's it. So if we're looking at here, this is a PPH built into co-spaces. So if we go through here, this is a, a, a little greeting, and it should come through here in Reo Māori. Uh, and this is uh, my mountains. This is Mount Kargil, so, and that's the, the Māori in here too. And as you look around, you can see this is sort of guiding us through on magic rails. So there is a tool called a path tool in here, so let's objects follow a path. 
So we can make sort of things here. So ko awa. So awa is river or, or water. So ofio is the name of that. So you're introducing where you're from. Uh, no ootipoti a hole. So that means I'm from Dunedin. So ootipoti is Te Reo Māori for Dunedin, and it shows you where in New Zealand, you know, Dunedin is. And that's actually um, 3D uh, data that's been pulled out of uh, Google Earth and turned into a 3D model. So you can do that sort of thing. Uh, and then here's my parents. There we go. So ko Edmund, rawa, ko Beryl, oko Matua. So here, and then here's me. And that is the pipiha here. In, in that too. So that's a pepeha, that's a, an introduction going through there. So you've got those formal settings. Mm -hmm. uh, if I go back and we go here, this is the merge cube version. So if you had a merge cube, you could do that and hold it in your hand. So of course I haven't got one here, but you can see here it's built on each of the sides. So mm -hmm. if I push play here, you will get an idea. We're hearing it. Good. So you can hear that that sound, and it's also got the translation in here too. So it changes. <laughs> and he walks like yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. And then you can press. So all this is programmed, and it's made interactive uh, through here. Oh, this is adorable. Honestly. So you can see here, so if I had that merge cube, you know, I'll be able to hold it in my hand. And, and, and Chris around. asks whether that uh, merge cube space is public because he could yes. demonstrate yeah. it. So if you, search, um, if you search Pipiha on, on the gallery, you'll find that. Uh, and in fact, if we go home here and I go to the gallery, you should find both of those spaces. So if I search Pipiha, Pipiha, so you can see both of those versions are there mm -hmm, in, okay. in CoSpaces. In the gallery, you don't have to sign up to CoSpaces to use the gallery. So you would need the app if you wanted to use it on, the, on your phone or something like that. But if you're just on your computer, you can go in and play and, and look at some of these things in the gallery just you know, to, to see that. And then if I type in, I think, spot the difference. And even the merge, because find, the merge cube yeah. uh, functionality seems to be attached to a pro version. Yes, it is. It is a, an add-on on the pro, so pro account. Could he, so could use that. Chris spontaneously pull it out or not? No. Ah, now, yes, he can, he can view it for free. So he doesn't need to have a pro account to, to ah, view but he any spaces. Create in it. The, but he, he couldn't create it. Create it. Yeah, gotcha. that's right. So okay. the pro account's really around creating. So anybody, whether they don't need accounts to view anything. So it's only to create things that you need a CoSpace account. But you can see here, here's the spot, the difference zoo is in the gallery as well. Yeah, right. So, and I think for those, um, I've set them to be remixable as well too. So that means a little bit like Scratch. So if you use Scratch, um, you can, I'll just stop that share now. Uh, you can remix other people's projects. So if you search through that gallery and you find, oh, that would be really useful. Or I'd like, I could see a way I could use that uh, you know, in my lessons in my classroom, you can remix those projects and make them your own. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Ah, so cool. here we go. Um, that's sort of a, a little taste of a couple of the ways that we're using CoSpaces and Zoom together in partnership to, to look at that immersive language learning. Um, is there anything anybody else would like to know well, or would like question. to see more of? Um, yeah. You'd like to connect Zoom for the voice in order to collaborate in the building. As you said, the mm. building is collaborative, but the viewing and the using in the end is singular, which, which I yes. didn't know. Yeah, single play. Mm. But um, that is still cool because you mm. can get uh, students to co-work. Co and um, yes. one thing is what I wanted to ask. Now, <laughs> it slipped my mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that is a feature I'd really love to see. Sorry, sorry, um, I, I'm stage. back to the question. So do oh, you yes, also perhaps use uh, Discord rather than Zoom? No, because uh, we're looking at ways that are easy for students to connect to each other. So um, you know, a lot of students perhaps use Discord at home, but um, we have a national filtering system for schools 
here. So for our school networks, they're all run by a ministry. Um, it's, it's a really good network and it's nice and fast and stable and everything. Uh, but we need uh, tools that are open for you know, everybody from really from about year three upwards, we're looking at that digital collaboration okay. um, from that thing. So Zoom's really neat because they can sign in with a Google account. And that's one of the things that's really neat is a lot of our schools are Google schools or mm -hmm. a Microsoft account or an Apple account even now. Mm -hmm. So as a lot of our schools are cloud-based and they're using cloud platforms like Google, those Google, Microsoft, Apple, uh, it's, a, it's a neat tool because it makes it easy for them to access uh, and easy for, for, to manage and sign up and things like that too. So some of the other tools... Um, from a management point of view, we don't have those uh, sort of oversight that we would have using Zoom. Mm -hmm. doing that sort of stuff. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else have a question to Ian? We're almost out of time, but we have a little. Yeah, we are. <laughs> but yeah, happy, when happy to chat. When do you have to go back to class? Do you, did you actually take class? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to, uh, to chat for, for you know, the next you know, few minutes. That's no problem. Um, okay. I've just got yeah, we job to, to do next and then I'm good. But um, mm -hmm. Can I introduce but, yeah, you also a little bit to the uh, uh, those present here, like Susanna is uh, at the uh, in Ireland at the University of DCU, is that correct still? I'm not sure whether you've changed university in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Dublin City University. Um, have I muted you accidentally? I mean, not accidentally, Possibly. but I think, no, earlier I heard some background noises and I muted a couple of people. Now I unmute, you, sorry, yeah. sorry. I okay. thought they can unmute themselves anyway, even if I mute them. That's actually one thing that I didn't show you, uh, well, I will show you, uh, is actually sharing spaces and how people know how to get to stuff. So I'll, I'll do that quickly. Cool. So, for example, this one, if I open that up. Uh, Technical University of Dublin, okay. Yes, I saw that, yeah. Um, Chris is in uh, the States. He's at the, uh, da, 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 at another the, uh, big university. <laughs> university of Florida. University, ah, of, Florida, university of Florida, yeah. Nice. And, and we have... Uh, also in our team, we have Jennifer, who's in at the university. She's a librarian, actually. Yeah, librarian at the University of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so, Louisiana at Lafayette. Yeah, Louisiana. Right. And else we have people who are working in Edmondo, which is the... Uh, um, in theater, which is the Italian Ministry of Education Research uh, a Virtual World of Open Sim. Quite a few people here. Whom else nice. do we have? Dong, I'm not quite sure, Dong, your background, to be honest. So, well, it's been really nice looking? sharing with you all today. Uh, so we see. you can see here, um, mm -hmm. this is the gallery page for this, what the different zoo one. Uh, and on here, there's a share button. Which is public. So this is what you'd see if you find it. But if I choose to share it, you can see these are the ways that we can share it. So we've got you know, direct links to, to social. It also generates a QR code, which is really handy. So I can mm -hmm. either put that up on the projector or print that out and put it on the wall. And mm -hmm. then you just scan it with your iPad, your phone, your headset, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Or you know, here's a direct link. It'll go straight to the gallery page. So you can send it out however you want. But you can also embed it in a website or in an LMS or something like that too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really uh, share, share friendly, I'd have to say. Uh, so that's, you know, no matter what you're using, there'll be a way to, to put that co-space uh, so mm -hmm. it's available for people to use. Um, and really neat. Uh, while we're there... It's an ESL teacher for an ESL institute. Very good. So we have TU Dublin... And Chris, did you manage to get the Merge Cube guide? I did, yeah. I pulled it show up on the Merge Cube just to try us, to. Please. Yeah. Mm. If you can. Awesome. That's uh, great. Yeah. That oh, seems difficult, I'll, I'll but I'll stop. try. <laughs> yeah. Give that a go. Um, let's see. 
Yes, I'll do this safely. And, okay. Uh, Cool, cool, oh, cool, cool. Yes. <laughs> we'll have to yeah. hang on. I'll make you spotlight. Hang on. Spotlight video. Here we go. Now there we can we see it all very clear. Nice. That is just awesome. Awesome, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> kids, cool. kids just love it. They love that. They love being able to hold that in their hand and, and just that whole oh, tactile absolutely. being able to manipulate but The fact it. is that yeah. the little character walks around it. Yeah. Did you see him? Yeah. Yeah. Walking? And there's a bird that's flying around too. And I thought that was pretty fun. Mm. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just Fantastic. those little touches, Chris. Yeah. It's nice. And, and kids love doing that sort of stuff. It's really neat. Um, so that, that uses, and the, both of the PPHs use that path tool. So, um, the, in the merge cube version, the me, the middle man, is following the path around the cube. So you've wrapped the, the path around the cube. In fact, there's multiple paths. Uh, and then in the sort of original version, there's a single path that the camera follows. You know, so you're like on a log ride railway coaster, uh, mm. roller coaster sort of kind of deal. Yeah. And what we love especially, and I'm pretty sure somebody in the audience also is very happy about it, to have some primary school toy. <laughs> so that is, <laughs> yes. that is really cool. Because some of now I'm going to, you know, just because you guys are all awesome, and now I happen to be a Co-Spaces ambassador. So you can see there in the chat, I've put COS EMCB. Ooh. So that is a trial code. So... You know, if you want to try CoSpaces out and you want to try the Pro and just measure whether you'd like to stick with Basic or Pro. Oh, so okay. if you use that code, that will give you 30 days. That will give you a month free, so full mm -hmm. access to everything and also give you 100 seats rather than the 30 seats the Basic um, package has. Uh, so you can amazing. try it everything. So, yeah, go, go forward with that um, and have fun exploring because it is... it is I'm. I have to say, I know I love Zoom, but and I know there's lots of tools that I use as, as part of being a STEAM facilitator, but CoSpaces is, you know, like my number one tool because there's just so much breadth for using that, you know, for, for digital technologies, and for science, Ian, for, for had, engineering, everything. I had big yeah. hopes and I kind of was so intrigued and at one time, but I haven't played long around it, but just had glanced mm. at it. And I had, I had really, I mean, I announced it in a really big way and I'm <laughs> not disappointed whatsoever at all. I'm so excited. I'm so Please, right. you showed us around that. And uh, Chris showing the so. AR version in the end mm -hmm. was just the absolute mm -hmm. highlight. Thank you that so awesome. much. No, no, I'm Thank you. Very pleased to share with you all today. It's been a blast. So have fun exploring. So and 10 o'clock in the morning your... in New Zealand. You're starting your day. Yep. <laughs> starting our day. <laughs> Thank and you. Thank um, you. I'll let you go and have your, your good night drinks and uh, finish your days. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ian. Yay. That's right. Actually, yeah. it's, it's not just Ian. Ian, is it? Yeah. It is. It's an Ian, but it's a, I think it's a, the Welsh spelling, actually. I think that oh, one. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, these, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you ever so much. That's all right. Thank you very but much. We hope that some collaboration maybe even comes mm. out of this uh, getting to know each other. Absolutely. That's yeah. right. That's what you know, we're always keen to look for people to, to connect with and, and continue conversations with. So um, feel free to, to touch base. <laughs> with that, I'm bringing the session to the close. Thank you ever so much. And everyone have a great night. <laughs>